Good evening, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Oxford Area School District Board of Directors work session agenda. Um, today is March 10th, 7 p.m. I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Queen. Certainly. Ms. Dean. Here. Ms. Harrison. Here. Mr. Patterson. Absent. Mr. Tanga. Here. Ms. Warren. Here. Mr. Gaspar. Here. Mr. Owens. Here. Mr. Robinson. Here. Mr. Ty. Here. Good quorum. Tonight we're going to start with the CCIU budget presentation by Mr. Joseph Lubitsky. And Dr. George Fjord. And? My boss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing us to come present our budget to you. Uh, as you know, budget season's all year round uh, in, in school districts, and, and the same is for the intermediate unit. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to cover uh, four parts of our budget. And uh, the four parts that make up almost a $281 million budget is our core, our occupational education, our categorical, and marketplace budgets. So uh, this is tradition at, at, at the IU for well over a decade. Uh, there is no increase in proposed core budget contributions. Um, and, and between Mr. Lubitsky and myself, we're going to go into the in depth in each part of these. Uh, but what, what you'll see as a constant thread is the services that we provide for your, for your children. And uh, uh, we're not a taxing authority, so we have to provide value to our school districts. And overall in our occupational education budget, we're we're looking at a 1.3% increase. Um, we operate at the intermediate unit and keeping our, our prices below the Act 1 index. Um, that is our driver throughout all, all, all that we do. Um, in the marketplace program, uh, we're seeing an average 1.49%. And we'll talk a little bit about how we got there uh, through some efficiencies, looking at leveraging our partnership with 12, our 12 partner school districts. We're able to really leverage that size to bring down costs. Um, you, you can see here the, the Act 1 index, uh, how it's historically uh, started out at 4.1 and now it's at 2.6. And uh, this is one of the budget pressures we know that we all have. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have about 281, nearly $282 million budget. Uh, the largest portion of our budget falls in marketplace budgets. Those are the ones, uh, that part of the budget is a service oriented and you opt into those. But the rest of the budgets are um, are quite diverse. Some are from the state, uh, federal monies, and others are going to come through some of our occupational educational programs, which we think are some of the best around. So specific to Oxford area, uh, the core budget will remain constant. Uh, that's the one we've had for over a decade. That's at 19, uh, nearly, nearly 20000 with $19,669. Our occupational education uh, is it's going to increase about ninety-seven thousand, nearly ninety-eight thousand uh, dollars. That's due to increased enrollment, uh, which I, I'd say that is a, a credit uh, to to all of you because we know that sixty percent of all middle school jobs uh, in, in in our country are going to come out of our occupational education. So that's a that's a really exciting trend to see. Um, so so thank you for supporting our, our future workforce. Uh, the marketplace budget. Uh, we have, a, it's about a 2.8% increase. That's based on your prior expenditures, uh, but you can opt in and out of programs. We, we estimate that based on your past uh, participation. So we, we come before you each year uh, to share our budget because we have some uh, Commonwealth deadlines. And the first one is by April 30th, we would need the core services budget approved by your board as you do each year. And then the occupational education one by the end of uh, June. Those are the two, two benchmarks that we, we need to meet per state reg regulations. Uh, the marketplace budget is approved by our board. Uh, that basically sets all the marketplace programs and their pricings that are associated with that. And as we said, we're at a 1.49% increase overall. So we've tried to keep those prices down because we know um, how difficult creating budgets in 2020 is. And the categorical services, that's, that's other revenue. Those are maybe uh, grants and federal programs. So what drives a lot of the work we've done, especially since I started back in August, 
uh, we, we developed these eight goals, and they're really centered around how we can provide better services for, for kids. And you know, one through eight, you'll see they'll, they'll intersect with finances, because one, we're gonna provide the best possible programs we can. We wanna be the best in the state, if not the nation, in the programs we provide for kids, but we have to do it in a fiscally responsible way. Uh, and you can see that's categorized in, in our occupational educational programs. You'll, you, we have some exciting programs that I, that I believe your kids will take full advantage of, and one that will serve our county pretty well, and hopefully their futures they become employable. Uh, but as I said earlier, our budget goal was to stay in the Act 1 index, and uh, we were able to accomplish that and stay actually well below that. Now, we share many of these uh, organizational budget challenges, and, and as you move through this, uh, we try to assist your, your school district in trying to control them by leveraging some partnerships and consortium pricing. And Mr. Lubitsky will go into some of those large-scale savings, and, and, and I can say uh, as, as a board, for those of you who have been here a while, those of you that are new, you'll see Oxford does a great job in, in partnering. And you'll see some of that through procurement and uh, efficient utilization, uh, especially in the commodities area, things that, that we can leverage our collective uh, size. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Mr. Lubitsky, and he'll dive into the, the nuts and bolts of, of our budget. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I provided the, uh, thank you Brian uh, for your help, but the, I provided the administration with a 105 page document, I'm not going to go through every slide. So what I try to do is extract different slides from this presentation um, to give you a kind of a flavor for the structure of our budgets, as well as also put together information specific to the Oxford School District. There's a section of the budget dedicated to staffing, salaries, benefits, healthcare benefits, those type of things. Um, this is just graphically shows our staffing uh, by budget area, and by far our marketplace is the largest in terms of total employees. Um, we're in people business. We deliver services to kids and to adults. So obviously they're, they're our main resources. In next year's proposed budgets, um, we have the positions that you see uh, listed up there by budget category. Um, these are our projected positions. We don't fill these positions until the enrollment in a program dictates it or the requested services from the school districts or other, other clients dictated. So right now, based on service levels and um, new initiatives, this is what we're projecting uh, for 2020, 2021. In the area of benefits, um, we share the same challenge that the school district has with uh, shouldering the cost of the pension, the pension costs of our employees. Um, graphically, you see that that cost contribution has increased from a little over 8% about 10 years ago to close to 35% of your total payroll. Um, and uh, obviously a, a big cost impact uh, for every school district and intermediate unit. Likewise, we keep very, very close to track of our health care benefits. Um, much like the model that you employ here with a self-funded basis, we see some successes there. Um, medical and prescription costs are our two biggest areas of health care benefits. There is a section about supplies, equipment, contracted services that talks about the uh, collective efforts of the school districts to save money. One of the examples I think that's, uh, that's really important and certainly one that the Oxford uh, uh, benefits from is uh, the collaboration in terms of uh, collection of taxes. Uh, this is particularly as earned income taxes in the county, approaching $220 million last year and we saved close to $2 million by uh, centralizing the tax collection in, in the county. Section in the budget uh, called categorical budgets. Uh, it's a short brief section, but it's important. Mm -hmm. it, it is uh, alternative sources of revenue, federal sources, grants, uh, other programs involve no school district money. However, it allows us to staff uh, 60 or 70 different positions to continue to provide services uh, to our member school districts. So we work hard to look for those alternative sources of revenue. Uh, looking at the core budget, you can see the, uh, the divisions that make up the, 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 uh, the core uh, of the intermediate unit. It makes up about 10% of our budget. And really, uh, not really exciting budget. We work really hard to keep it flat, um, uh, a very modest increase based on the projected expenditures of a little over $29 million of the total budget. Uh, Here's a list of significant budget items um, where we did see some increases in the, let's say the PEASERS I just talked about or a new position. We tried to offset that by uh, re 
reducing other areas of expenditures, supplies, equipment, contracted services. So overall, about a $30,000 increase on a $29 million budget. Uh, this is, uh, out of that $29 million, the direct charge for every school district is $600,000 in total. A bit of an eye chart here, so I did extract how that calculation is derived for the Oxford School District. And essentially, it's a formula based on the aid ratio assigned to the district by the, the Commonwealth, uh, multiplied by the uh, district's weighted average daily membership, which essentially is your enrollment, um, and uh, a weighting factor as, as uh, developed by the Department of Education. So you're looking at about $19,669 right now um, based on those factors. That's your contribution to the core budgets. The occupational education budget, as Dr. Fury said, is, is the area where we uh, fund the uh, operation of our three technical college high schools. Um, over the last decade or so, we've had a big emphasis on not only the construction of a new campus at Penix Bridge, but also uh, retrofitting of a manufacturing building in Downingtown and the renovation of the existing uh, vocational school in Pickering or Phoenixville. Cyber Charter Funding Reform, Mr. Wood. Thank you. I do places you find language uh, that may be very similar language to what uh, Dr. Owens is uh, familiar with, being on the Legislative Council. I also included a uh, potential savings chart. The yellow column all the way at the end would be the entire impact if, in fact, the Charter School Funding Reform was enacted. Uh, this time before it, uh, it's scheduled to be on the agenda for next week. Is there any concern or any questions I can ask with the resolution? Could you just explain this chart a little bit to me? I'm a little dense today. So this is the estimated costs 2019-2020. Next column is the estimated costs 2021. That's the change. It's actually basic education funding. Okay. Brian, uh, you can help me out here too. 13 million is, is the BEF, proposed BEF. Uh, slightly higher than that, about uh, 100,000, a little over 100,000 higher than that. Percentage change in the BEF. Okay. Um, then it's the SEF. And those changes, the dollar change there, percentage FEF change of 4%. So the charter school, the last column under Oxford, I, you don't have it in color, so I apologize. The second to last column, uh, the 74, 747, let's say, is the charter school overall savings. All right? You're right. Yep. And uh, school district's net funding impact of the BES, FEFs, and charter school reform, then would be 94. So actually, the charter school reform is $747,840. Uh, if you would take that out, then you would be back to the third column of uh, $100,000, roughly, $111,000. So this is saving us money? If the reform would be enacted by the Pennsylvania legislative bodies, then it would save us uh, $747,000, almost $748,000, just with charter school reform. And the odds on that? Um, I won't talk to the odds on that right now. <laughs> Does what Dr. I can Owens say, have any? What I, what I can say is <laughs> that uh, the more that our legislative body hears from people that are concerned about charter school funding reform, uh, the more likely the reform would gain traction. Dr. Owens? That's probably a good way to put it. <laughs> um, this is something that has come before the legislature year after year. The idea of the Legislative Council was if local school boards in the county can support this, it might help our legislators in Harrisburg pay more attention to those bills as they come forward, as they go through committee and then 
hopefully it can go to the floor. Does that help? Sure. But then my next question becomes, what is it that we're putting on our agenda to approve if we aren't even sure that it's going to come through legislation? So what I'm suggesting we put on is a resolution to our legislators uh, that we're in support of charter school reform. If for no other reason than looking to save uh, seven, oh, $748,000 next fiscal year. So this is then, this is just our card in the game saying that we're for it. Correct. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be too nope. dense there. I just want to know what we're talking about. So. That, that's 748 for all the districts in the state, not just for ours. But that's just for ours. That, that's, that's our, that would be our savings. So it depends how many people, uh, how many charter school students one has. For example, on this chart is, uh, just start at the top, Avon Grove School District, their projected savings would be $654,000, for example. Uh, Projected savings for Coatesville would be almost 10 million. Um, down in town, almost a million. And Great Valley, half a million, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So then it's saved, but if it saves all of us money, it seems it's much more likely that it would pass, right? The, Correct, this legislation would be for the entire Commonwealth. It doesn't sound like something that the charter schools are going to want. I'm just saying. Uh, moving on. 2021, Oxford Area High School Band and <coughs> Thank you. Also at your place is, is a request from our band director, Dr. Coppola, uh, for a trip next year uh, to uh, Orlando, I believe, uh, perform the Disney Performing Arts Program. Uh, the band would go down there. I think they do this about every four years. And this would be April 28th to May 30th, 2021. And the reason that it's on your agenda is I believe we would need to approve any trip out of state as well as authorize for that year any uh, insurance for any out-of-state travel. We don't already have that in the right. Yeah. Is there a Disney trip this year? No. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a trip like this. They, they try to do it every four years so they catch a kid in the uh, fine arts program of music at least once. And what would the cost be for the district? I mean, not, not specific numbers, but just what it's, would the uh, district be responsible it's for? Fairly self-funding, thank you. Uh, the cost would be for the time, a substitute potentially for the time that the band director is out. Uh, and also, uh, a partial cost, we decided this year to send one administrator on the trip mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, past experience. Thank you. All right, moving on. Regular, any other questions on the band course trip? Regular meeting agenda. Does anyone have any questions about the regular meeting agenda? It looked pretty bland to me, to be perfectly honest. Closing items. Calendar. Um, all these meetings will be in this room unless otherwise specified. Tuesday, March 17th, Budget and Finance Committee, 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, March 17th, Regular Meeting, 7 p.m. April 14th, Work Session, 7 p.m. April 21st, Regular Meeting, 7 p.m. Does anyone want to make any additions to the calendar? I do. Just a second. Um, Tuesday, March 17th, Regular Meeting, 7 p.m. April 21st, Seventh. 
Mr. Gaspar? Yes, the 14th. We will have student athletics activities at 6.30 and then facilities at 6.45. Uh, Anybody else? Um, do we have any visitors? Adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second.